Chakshura Militam Jaina as my Shri Gurve Nama Vanchakalpa Tanubhyascha Kripasinduve Vacha Patitanam Pavanebio Vaishnavebio Namo Namaha Hare Krishna So dear respected Maharajas Devotees, we welcome you to this online tribute to celebrate the life and memory of one of Srila Prabhupada's most beloved sons. We have on this call today um, devotees from East Africa, West Africa, Mauritius, South Africa, and other parts of the world. Thank you very much for joining us. Of course, we are gathered here with a very heavy heart with an unbelievable sense of pain and grief. And we are very eager to hear from so many of our senior Vaishnavas, Srila Prabhupada's disciples, to help us soothe that pain. Our program today is for 120 minutes, two hours. 90 minutes, we will be uh, having a number of appreciations at approximately 5.45 p.m. South African time we will cross over to the final rite ceremony that's scheduled to happen in America. So we are technically set up for that at exactly the time that that final ceremony will happen. We will cross over seamlessly, so you'll see it on your screen. So our program starts with a Guru Puja in about, to last for about 10 minutes. Then we'll have a video for about eight minutes followed by a number of appreciations. We'll start off with His Holiness Bhakti Chaitanya Swami Maharaj. We'll then go on to His Holiness Jaya Advaita Swami Maharaj, who's joining us from the USA. At number three, we'll have His Grace Prabhu from Mauritius. Thereafter, we'll have Swarup Dhamadara Prabhu to read a tribute from His Holiness Patasarati Das Maharaj. We'll then ask Medavi Prabhu, Followed by Nanda Kumar Prabhu. At that point, we will have a short video. We'll come back and have Ramanuja Charya Prabhu, His Holiness Kadama Kanan Swami, His Holiness Ram Govinda Maharaj, and Shilagiri Raj Maharaj will conclude the appreciations with the, uh, will lead us into Mishinga Day of Kiritan. Each presentation is scheduled for about five to seven minutes. And just note that at some point in time, I will interject the moment we have the live stream coming through from the USA. So with that said, I'd like to hand over to His Grace Prabhanu Prabhu, the new Daganath Puri Temple in Phoenix for Guru Puja. Hare Krishna. Shall you 
श्री गुरु कारण सिंधु आज माजरान बंधु श्री गुरु कारण सिंधु आज मागे लोकनाथ लोक रजीवान चारु स्वामी जाया गुरु देवा भक्ति स्वामी जाया गुरु जाया भक्ति चारु स्वामी जाया गुरु देवा भक्ति चारु जाया गुरु देव जाया भक्ति चारु स्वामी जाया गुरु देवा भक्ति चारु स्वामी जाया गुरु देव जाया भक्ति चारु स्वामी जाया गुरु देवा भक्ति चारु स्वामी जाया गुरु देवा जाया भक्ति चारु जाया गुरु देवा भक्ति चारु स्वामी जाया गुरु देव जाय जाय प्रभु खान प्रभु खान प्रभु खान प्रभु खान जाय जाय प्रभु खान प्रभु खान प्रभु खान प्रभु खान नमो विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमाते भक्ति चारु स्वामी विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमाते भक्त चारु स्वामी स्नेग्ध चेत्र सुने वाग्मी नाम चारतम प्रभुपा प्राण नोमनी भक्ति चारु पद प्रभुपा प्राण नोमनी भक्ति चारु पद नमा विष्णु पदाय विष्णुपाया श्रीमाते भक्ति वेद स्वामी निचि नामिने नम हो विष्णु पद कृष्ण पुष्टा भूतले श्रीमाते भक्ति वेद स्वामी निचि नामिने 
नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे जय भक्ति चारु स्वामी जय गुरु देवा 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 निताय गो हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो नुताय गोर हरि बो नुताय गोर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो हरि इस होली ने सुलभ की चरण स्वामी मारी की सील भव भारी की आनंद को दिवाई सुना बंदी की Did I go from an end? So we'll hand over now to His Grace Govardhan Prabhu. Na Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama. राम राम हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण प्रभु कोता गिला अच्छा जाता Jai Ram Jai Ram 
So at this time, we'd like to ask His Holiness Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj to kindly begin the appreciations. Okay, I unmuted myself. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I hope you can hear me all right. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shumati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharane Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pasya Chadejitarane Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunitya Nanda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivas Adi Gauravakta Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Vanchika, Jurubhyas, Jagripa, Sindhubhya, Evacha, Padidhanam, Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo, Namo Namaha. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Chamati Bhakti Charu Swamin Iti Namane. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Thank you, devotees, for assembling in such numbers on such a sacred but sad occasion. Uh, it is just over the last 24 hours or a little more, plus back in 1977, when Srila Prabhupada left this world, just over those two times, Prabhupada's disappearance and the immediate time here, that I have really, I feel I've really learned something at least of what Ramananda Roy expressed to Lord Chaitanya uh, when, they, when they met for the first time. Lord Chaitanya asked Ramananda Roy, of all sufferings, what is the worst? And Ramananda Roy gave such an amazing answer. He said, except for separation from the devotee, I don't know of any intolerable suffering. So this has been our experience for the last 24 or 30 hours. And then, of course, back when Srila Prabhupada left, that, oh, that was something we, we cannot really describe. But it reflects the nature of the devotee from whom we have become separated. The, the greater the devotee, the deeper the devotee, the, uh, the warmer the devotee's heart, then the more the separation that we feel. So I, I have known Bhakti Churu Maharaj personally on a very personal level regularly since what, I think 1987, if I'm not mistaken, a little more than 30 years ago when he first came here uh, to South Africa. And immediately <clears throat> when I met him, I noticed what a, an open-hearted and warm-hearted and soft-hearted devotee he was. Uh, we met, first of all, in the airport in Johannesburg. 
Then we drove down here to our Radha Radhanath temple in Durban. And I spent th those hours with him. And what a wonderful experience. Since then, <clears throat> I, I've spent so much time with him. Uh, his visits here to South Africa, and then we would meet generally in Mayapur every year, and, and here and there at other times also. And his mood was, <clears throat> was unchanging, always very warm, always very kind <clears throat> to, to everyone, including myself personally. He was never ever negligent in his relationship with me. Uh, he was always very careful and attentive and, and really looked after me, just like you could say, just like a younger brother. So I'll never forget that. And over these, <clears throat> over this, this day, over this day, and I'm sure it will continue over the following days, uh, feelings of separation have been, well, quite overpowering and overwhelming. But what can be done? This is the nature of the material world. We all have to face, face this. We already faced it before when Srila Prabhupada left. So, so I've been also thinking about how, how we should all, and particularly his disciples, should take it. Because we don't want to just get into some mood of misery and, and lamentation as materialistic people do when they're separated from someone who's be, been very close to them for a long time. Krishna consciousness is different, very different. And even though there's, there's sometimes great, great separation there, but that separation is very intimately uh, connected uh, intimately and inseparably connected with the mood of being together with the, the person. So uh, in this regard, I'd just like to tell you, particularly disciples of Bhakti Churu Maharaj, of an experience I had uh, with Srila Prabhupada. It was 1973. I had not been living in the temple in London for a long time, just maybe less than a year. And it was Janmastami Day. Prabhupada was installing Radha Gokulananda in Bhaktivedanta Manor. I was what is called the temple commander in our central London temple. It means I was basically second in charge under the president, and Prabhupada was installing Radha Gokulananda at Bhaktivedanta Manor, not too far away, an hour's drive away. That very day, everyone wanted to go. I wanted to go also. <clears throat> but the temple president, Prabhavishnu Prabhu, he told me in a very matter-of-fact way, he said, Prabhu, one of us has to stay here because it's Janmastami and many people will be coming, festival will be going on. So he was the president, I was his second man. You can guess who had to stay back. <laughs> yes, it was me and we had a wonderful festival. But initially, those, those thoughts of how I would like to be at the manor with Prabhupada for that special, special program. They were just almost haunting me. 
But then I remembered how I'd read a number of times, actually, that Prabhupada said, the spiritual master is there in his instructions. <clears throat> the spiritual master is there in his servants. And I thought, yes, let me meditate on that and just see what experience comes. So I really tried to focus my mind on this understanding that Prabhupada was there with me right at that time, that I was not exactly just separated, but there was a transcendental connection. And sure enough, shortly, within less than half an hour, I felt this deep, of course, this very subtle, but deep connection with Srila Prabhupada. And I understood that actually it's true. He's there with me because I'm engaged in his service. So for all of you disciples of His Holiness Bhakti Sri Maharaj, uh, please, please try to meditate on this. Please try to meditate on this, that our relationships are eternal. They're not limited by space and time and geog geographical considerations. So your relationship with Bhakti Churu Maharaj, your Guru Maharaj, is similarly not limited. It's only limited by our consciousness. So please try to meditate on this as you, as you engage in his service in Prabhupada's Iskon. And I guarantee, if you really focus your minds like that, then you'll feel that you're with him again. Because you will be. Because he will not have left you. He'll be with you eternally. Please try to do like this. And in this way, you'll enter into another level of experience in Krishna consciousness and you'll realize the depths of Krishna consciousness. It is certainly transcendental and beyond the limitations of this material world. So thank you very much. And I'm praying to Bhakti Churu Maharaj. I'm sure he's now with Prabhupada and Radha and Krishna. Please put in a good word for me. Put in a good word for me so that we can meet up again face to face before too long. Srila Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much Maharaj, we really appreciate those kind words. Um, just the organizers who organize who are controlling things from Durban. It is now 1740. We are meant to cross over at 1745. I'm also aware that we have over 500 devotees on the Zoom call and many are trying to join. Can you give me a quick indication of what we should be doing in terms of allowing those other devotees in? The fact that we are four minutes away from the crossover. Amrita Mani, can you just advise, please? Uh, Hare Krishna Pro. Um, the meeting does have a limit of 500 uh, devotees. So it would only allow 500 devotees to view um, His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj's last rites on the meeting here. Okay. And is there any way we can accommodate those devotees who are more than 500 on the Facebook link or something? Uh, yes, we can share the link in the waiting room to um, Raj's last rite ceremony. Okay, and then you are keeping a vigilant eye on the crossover, right? Yes, Prabhu. Okay, so can I then ask Swarup Dhamadar Prabhu, um, who has an offering from His Holiness Pati Sarati Maharaj, an appreciation, if he could please read that now. Sarup Damodar Prabhu. Uh, 
Hare Krishna. So this is a homage to His Holiness Bhakti Chiru Maharaj from Patrasarati Das Goswami. I first heard Srila Bhakti Charamad speak in 1987. He was giving a Srimad Bhagavatam class at the Krishna Balaram Mandir. I was immediately impressed by his speech, his deep empathy, compassion, and narrative. After the class, I followed him into the reception area of our Krishna Balaram guest house to speak with him. I thanked him for the inspiring talk and invited him to South Africa. Over the coming years, he would fondly remind me that I was the first to invite him to South Africa. Subsequently, if I remember correctly, in 1988, he was appointed the chairman of the GBC and he came to South Africa to unify the devotees and help with the spreading of Krishna consciousness here. His mood stressed cooperation, and the most senior grand disciples here of Srila Prabhupada, namely Sri Hari Prabhu, Sri Bhanda Sindhu Prabhu, and Sri Takirti Prabhu, took shelter of him and later became his disciples. Over the years, Srila Bhakti Charamraj personally helped me on various occasions when there was some misunderstanding of politics. I remember Maharaj as a sensitive and spiritually advanced gentleman. I accept him as an eternal associate of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and that his birth in Bengal and service to Srila Prabhupada from 1976 onwards was a direct arrangement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada personally gave him sannyas, and he served Srila Prabhupada intimately, especially in 1977. Within my mind, there is no doubt that he has now joined in the Lord's pastimes and the spiritual association of our beloved Guru Maharaj, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Gorkishar Das Babaji, and Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. All these acharyas are intimate associates in Goloka Vrindavan, and by their arrangement, Srila Bhakti Chiru Maharaj appeared in this material world for the express purpose of serving Srila Prabhupada and establishing Krishna consciousness in various parts of the world. Two weeks ago, when I first got news that Maharaj had contracted the virus and was hospitalized, I saw it as a leela of Maharaj's, and it reminded me of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's leela of leaving this world. At a time like this, it is important to see through Shastra Shastra Chakshush. It is easy to feel desperation, despondency, and despair. And while this is natural, as there is no greater pain than the pain of separation from the Vaishnavas, I immediately thought of the passing of Srila Haridas Thakur, as described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Antilila, Chapter 11. Hare Krishna, excuse me. I'm getting a message that the final rice ceremony move. was begun. Um, okay. Ritamani. Amrita Mani, can you cross us over? So, Ravdamada Prabhu, you kindly continue. We're running 15 minutes late in America, it seems. We'll continue with the homage of Patasarati Maharaj. And while it is natural, as there is no greater pain than the pain of separation from the Vaishnavas, I immediately thought of the passing of Haridas Thakur as described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Antilila chapter 11. When you read the description of Srila Haridas Thakur passing away, there is jubilation, happiness, ecstasy, bliss, charm, and sweetness. I humbly request the devotees to please read Antilila chapter 11. I would like to quote text 57 to 64 in this offering to Srila Bhakti Chara Maharaj. Quote, seeing the wonderful death of Haridas Thakur by his own will, which was just like a great mystic yogis, everyone remembered the passing away of Bhishma. There was a tumultuous noise as they all chanted the holy names, Hari and Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became overwhelmed with ecstatic love. 
the Lord raised the body of Haridas Thakur and placed it on his lap. Then he began to dance in the courtyard in great ecstatic love. Because of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstatic love, all the devotees were helpless. And in ecstatic love, they also began to dance and chant congregationally. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced for some time. And then Swarup Damodar Goswami informed him of other rituals for the body of Thakur Haridas. The body of Haridas Thakur was then raised onto a carrier that resembled an airship and then taken to the sea, accompanied by congregational chanting. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced in front of the procession and Rakreshwara Pandit, along with the other devotees, chanted and danced behind him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bathed the body of Haridas Thakur in the sea and declared, from this day on, this sea has become a great pilgrimage site. Unquote. We can understand from the words of Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj that at the passing away of Haridas Thakur, there were no mundane sentiments of depression, material despair, no hopelessness. Rather, it was a way to ecstatic love of Krishna, Prema Vishta, to become absorbed in love of Krishna. Indeed, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing with the body of Haridas Thakur. Our Iskand, as Srila Prabhupada has stated in a commentary in Chaitanya Charitamrita, is non different from the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Still, it is natural for the disciples to feel intense separation from the spiritual master. And it is sad that we can't be together giving each other support. But you are all in my thoughts and prayers. It is important that we all carry Maharaja's mood and instructions in our heart and act in a way that will please him. Maharaj was so full of love and compassion, always inquiring about one's welfare and making arrangements to accommodate devotees of all stature. If we see from a spiritual point of view as described in Chaitanya Charitamrita, there is no cause for lamentation, but simply joy that Srila Bhakti Charo Maharaj has now gained the personal association of Srila Prabhupada in his spiritual body in Goloka Vrindavan. This is the destination for all serious and sincere followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I repeatedly offer my Koti Koti Dandavats at the dust of Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj's divine lotus feet and pray that I can try to please Srila Prabhupada and our Guru Parampara as he did. Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj will always remain my senior Shiksha Guru a beloved intimate servant of Srila Prabhupada, an exemplary inspirational leader with an Islam, and the perfectly devoted disciple of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. If in this lifetime I can please Srila Prabhupada and our Guru Parampara even one millionth of what Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj did, then I will consider my life a great success. To Maharaj's disciples, please know that you are not alone. Maharaj always had a family spirit, and we are all one big family. So please take shelter of those you have faith in. This would please Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinde Ki. Your fallen and lowly servant, Pata Sarachi Das Goswami. Thank you very much, Sarup Damodar Prabhu, for reading His Holiness Pastor Srati Maharaj's very beautiful appreciation. Uh, in terms of timing, we have now five minutes to go. So what I'm going to do is ask Medavi Prabhu in Cape Town. Are you, to uh, are you able to find Medavi Prabhu in Cape Town and see if we can connect Medavi Prabhu? And while you're finding Medavi Prabhu, there's Arjuna Prabhu in Mauritius is somewhere on the line also. We need to just locate him on the list that you have, okay? Hare Krishna. Can I hear Please go ahead. 
Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vrishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gorvani Prachayani Nirvishesha Srinivadi Astachala Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Charu Swami Iti Namine Vanta Kalpati Vizja Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavav
to be associating with the rank and file devotees. So that was a very wonderful experience. Uh, we used to take him on walks to Kirshnabosch Gardens, very expansive gardens, uh, national gardens here in Cape Town. And we used to have some wonderful times, especially he would love to cook. Uh, he would love to cook and we would uh, partake of his wonderful preparations uh, when he came to Cape Town, his famous uh, stir fry and various other preparations that he would like to make. And we enjoyed very much his wonderful association. Uh, we couldn't see his great situation as a world leader of ISKCON. We were just maybe like the little residents of Vrindavan that we only saw this little intimate uh, feature of him uh, uh, in his kindness and his mercifulness to us. So as the years went by, um, he became uh, one of the foremost leaders of ISKCON, uh, putting out fires everywhere, practically speaking, and doing whatever was necessary to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. He took up difficult positions in New Mayapur, any place in the world that was, was suffering uh, due to various other circumstances. He accepted it very willingly uh, to go and try to uh, expand and increase and enliven devotees to carry on in practically hopeless situations. So he was that guiding light that served Srila Prabhupada in the most difficult circumstances. So he was a wonderful example for all of us to not just look for the pleasant situations, but to take wherever uh, service is, is available and try to make a situation into a wonderful place for Krishna consciousness. So I offer my humble respects to Maharaj and, and hope that uh, he will look kindly upon us all. And of course, his disciples. We feel the greatest greatest sorrow for them and their pain. And we pray uh, that whatever little uh, help we can offer, any little consolation that we can present, any assistance we can offer, we offer that with, with great love for His Holiness, Bhakti Tru Swami. Bhakti Tru Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Medavi Prabhu. Amrita Mani, I'm going to suggest at this time that we actually do cross over. Uh, if they say 15 minutes, it'll be like any time now. So we could just join that Facebook crossover, please. Amrita Mani. Sure, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Devotees, it seems that there's still a delay on the, in, in America. What we're going to do is continue the program, and Amrita Mani is going to keep a very vigilant check to make sure we cross over at the appropriate time. So at this time, we'd like to ask His Grace Nanda Kumar Prabhu, who's based in Johannesburg, to kindly uh, give his appreciation. Nanda Kumar Prabhu. Amrita Mani, you're able to track Nanda Kumar Prabhu on your list. Every Gauravani Pacharini. You're a Shishan Sunyavadi Pasatai to Satarini. Omagyana Timiranda Siaginanjana Salakaya, Chakshu Militam Jaina, Tasmai Shibu Yvaina Maha. Pancha kalpa through Vyasya kripas in your baby cha, Pachitan and Pav Navio, Vaishnavio, no more Namaha. She Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, she had beta gadar, Harshavasa, the Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, yeah, I remember very, very fondly that when she loved. Dr. Churmach first came to South Africa. Uh, I was then the temple president at Malzus and uh, together with a small group of devotees, we went to the airport. And uh, yeah, the, the plane was delayed, the flight was delayed, and we waited for some time. And eventually, uh, at that time, we could actually, the airport was a bit different then. You could stand upstairs and look through the big glass windows. And then, uh, yeah, so then as the passengers were disembarking, uh, we saw Maharaj come out uh, because it was his first visit to South Africa. And South Africa was also at that time under the apartheid government. So the Maharaj was dressed in civilian clothes and we easily identified him. He had a like a small, like, uh, cap on and uh, yeah, civilian clothes. And he had a very beautiful spring in his step. And upon seeing him, all the devotees, the offered obeisances, and it, even though he was dressed in civilian clothes, we immediately made him out. And uh, all the devotees offered obeisances and we were very, very ecstatic upon seeing him. And then as we, so Maharaj spent a few days in Maldestrip and uh, yeah, upon Maharaj is giving his first class, he's singing Jai Radha Madhava. Uh, it was very, very different. And devotees were completely amazed uh, by Maharaj's singing and also by his class. And I think that the most important thing was that you know, Maharaj brought a freshness uh, in, 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 in the practice of Krishna consciousness. He was very, very open in his dealings with the devotees. And uh, he was very, very kind-hearted to the devotees also. And immediately devotees took to him. And what was amazing was that, uh, uh, please mind the language. He said that uh, uh, Iskon like, likes to keep devote, uh, devo Iskon likes to keep devotees like mushrooms, that mushrooms grow in the dark and they fed uh, crap. So he, in this way, he kind of showed that actually, you know, he was very, very open and he wanted to deal with devotees as he would deal uh, with any of his God brothers and with, with devotees in general. So we saw that Maharaj was very, very open like that. He was very accommodating. And he's, uh, he brought a freshness to 
the practice of Krishna consciousness, we know that Maharaj is a spiritual entrepreneur. And in the way that he presented Krishna consciousness, in the way that he executed Krishna consciousness, the one is easily reminded of the statement made by Sanatana Goswami in his glorification of uh, Shilharida Stakur, when he said that you are, there are some devotees who are expert in preaching, uh, but their behavior is not very good, and some devotees are uh, expert in their behavior, very accomplished in their behavior, but they're not good preachers. But you yourself, Harida Stalkur, you are uh, the spiritual master of the entire world because you're expert both in preaching and in behavior. So we see in Maharaj also that he was an expert preacher, but also his sadhachar, his behavior was very, very exemplary. And many devotees emulated uh, the way that he actually dealt with the devotees, his kindness, his compassion, his soft heartedness. And also he was very, very firm when, 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 when he needed to be. So we reminded of the phrase where Prabhupada said that one has to be soft as a rose and hard as a thunderbolt. So we see that with Maharaj, he was very, very expert in his dealing with the devotees. And uh, Ashila Bhakti Siddhanta has said that uh, the Krishna consciousness is a family business. And Srila Bhakti Shurmaraj uh, was definitely a family man. ISKCON was his family. And all the devotees within ISKCON were part of that family. And he made it his business to see that everyone was taken care of. Especially when he was at Radha Radna Temple, we would be sitting in the amphitheater, we would be taking prasadam. And Maharaj would inquire that, what prasadam you have made for me? you must distribute or you must cook the same prasadam for the general body of devotees. So you didn't want to be uh, treated in, in an exceptional way, but we know that uh, Maharaj was an exceptional devotee. And uh, just by this, we could understand that you know, he was very, very caring, he was very loving, and he wanted the best for everyone. He wanted everyone to be happy in Krishna consciousness. And we see how, uh, when Iskwan was going through difficulties you know, with the Acharya system, Mars was very, very uh, kind of uh, vocal together with Ravinda Swaru Prabhu. And they formulated, with, together with other devotees, formulated the way forward for Iskwan. And we see how you know, Iskwan has grown to be such a wonderful society, such a powerful society. And you know, definitely, uh, we will miss the association of Maharaj because he, you know, he brought a uh, breath of fresh air to everything that he did. And uh, he actually uh, injected life. Just, and he was also very, very vigilant in the way that he did things or when he saw things going a little bit uh, haywire within his gun. Just as described that when one plants flower seeds, many weeds would grow. So the vigilant gardener would ensure that the weeds are removed. So Maharaj was very, very vigilant like that. Uh, we, we know from Iskand's history that how he traveled the world trying to rectify uh, mistakes that were made and to give solace to, uh, grieve, to grieving devotees and to somehow you know, make everyone comfortable and happy. In the house. So we're very, very thankful to Maharaj for being the wonderful Vaishnava that he is, that he was. And uh, there's a wonderful quotation which I normally cite, and I think is very, very befitting uh, in glorification of Marge. So it's described that a grateful heart is humble, a humble heart is forgiving, a forgiving heart is tolerant, a tolerant heart is compassionate, a compassionate heart is devotional, and a devotional heart is the heart of a Vaishnava. So Maharaj exemplifies all of this, that he was humble, he was forgiving, he was tolerant, you know, he was compassionate, and he was very, very devotional. Maharaj's classes were very erudite, very scholarly, but uh, mixed with devotion. Uh, it actually brought alive the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. And Maharaj's singing and his bhajans were legendary. 
and we see how whenever Maj came to Rad the Radna temple, uh, it was always a festival and uh, the mood was very, very ecstatic. Everyone was uh, blissful in their service and everyone was blissful in association of devotees. So we're very, very thankful for Maj for actually showing us how to be uh, wonderful Vaishnavas, how to be wonderful devotees, and what actually, and actually what it means to be a Vaishnava. So thank you very much, Maj, for giving us your association, for being in our lives, and we pray that you will continue to bless us uh, so that we can actually grow in Krishna consciousness and that the Krishna consciousness continues to expand uh, like the lotus flower that it is uh, to embrace the whole world in, with the fragrance of its devotion. So thank you very much, Maharaj Hare Krishna. His Holiness Bhakti Chura Maharaj Ki Jai. Chila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna, Nandikumar Prabhu, thank you very much. From Rita Mani, I'm now getting messages that tells, tells us that they're about to begin. Is that what you were seeing? Um, uh, Prabhu, I, I still see, but it's not live as yet. All right, so you're going to have to just interject when they do, because I'm getting so many messages. Sure, so... Away and three minutes away, okay? No, but as soon as they start, I will share the screen, Prabhu. All right, thank you. So His Holiness Kadama Khan and Maharaj has to leave for another program. Maybe if Maharaj is online, if you can connect Maharaj, we could have Maharaj's appreciation. Okay. Hare Oma Gyanati ki madam siya ki nimmana sadakya shashi unitam nina tasmai shi guru Um As we are are all commemorating, and as I was speaking with various devotees about Guru uh, Maharaj, um, one quality was mentioned by all, and that was Maharaj's kindness. How he was just kind to everyone and uh, and somehow or other many devotees felt that he was especially kind to them i also felt like that and somehow or other uh, because the kindness of maharaj was not an ordinary it was the the kindness of uh, that came from his purity from his pure heart it was, Maharaj was truly a, a person who was by nature not causing any anxiety to any living being, Udvega Nadiva. In this way, Maharaj was very much. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Um, so in, in, the, in the bigger picture of uh, of Lord Chaitanya's movement, we can understand that Bhakti Churu Maharaj was not an ordinary person, but rather a special personality who was sent to, uh, to assist Srila Prabhupada. Um, Maharaj came rather late during Srila Prabhupada's presence on the planet, but Srila Prabhupada immediately saw that here is someone who is very qualified. He gave him first and second initiation at the same time and six months later, sannyas. And, and soon Bhakti Chiru Maharaj became, uh, is he talking became really close to the Prabhupada in his, final, um, in his final days on the planet and taking care of him personally. So the Prabhupada instructed him to translate uh, the books, his books in Bengali, and in this way, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj very thoroughly also absorbed Srila Prabhupada's books. He was already very learned. Um, he used to um, give very detailed seminars on the uh, on the Mahabharata, and then he said, "Yes, I learned all this from my grandmother. She used to tell us all these things." You see, such a grandmother, such a background. Um, 
So Maharaj was certainly a most special soul um, who came to this movement for a, a very for for a special purpose to to lead this movement as he did um, after Srila Prabhupada's departure. And and Maharaj has been a pillar upholding this movement because Maharaj he was not only an emblem of, of purity and an example, Maharaj was uh, was at the same time very kind and in this way he conquered the hearts of people, he, he created faith, and in, in that way uh, it became Maharaj's role became very, very prominent as a spiritual mother, as a GBC, traveling all over the world. And we became all uh, closely connected to him. And everyone really feels like a close family member has now left us. And yeah, the loss that we feel now is enormous on, on a personal level. Uh, we all feel that uh, we miss. Um, it is all correct that now we can no longer have that personal association. Um, um, now we can only connect with him through service. And by, uh, by fulfilling uh, his desire, um, which was very much to, to serve Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada's movement. Um, and, uh, and so, somehow or other, uh, I'm thinking about that. How, who will now, uh, who will now do this service that Maharaj has done? Such a devotee uh, cannot be easily replaced. It's like, Somehow or other, um, altogether, we have to uh, make a commitment to um, to keep Iskon strong, and in that way, will attract the the blessings of Bhakti Churu Maharaj, and in that way, will continue to remain um, closely connected to him and to Sri Prabhupada. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Shri Bhakti Chiru Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much indeed. We would now like uh, to play a short video album that um, is ready. Amrita Mani, are you able to play that video now, please? Can I also ask all the devotees of the call? There's about 500 devotees on this call to kindly mute so we don't get the cross notes coming through. Amrita Mani, can you put that video on now, please? Tomar 
Heno Prabhu Kota Gela Acharya Taku Kahamura Swaru Krupa Sanatan Kahadasa Ragunata Patita Pavan Kahadasa Ragunata Patita Pavan Kahamura Bhata Yuga Kahakuri Kahamura Bhata Yuga Kahakavira Eka Kale Kota Gela Kora Nataraj Eka Kale Kota Gela Gora Nataraj Ashane Kuti Bhumata Anala Anale Pashivo Ashane Kuti Bhumata Anale Pashivo Guranga Gunera Nidhi Kota Gila Pavo Guranga Gunera Nidhi Kota Gila Pavo Sheshava Shangira Sange Jai Koilo Bilas Sheshava Shangira Shange Jai Koilo Bilas Se Sangana Paya Kande Naratumada She Shanga Napaya Kande Naratomada 
जे अनिल प्रेमे धन करुणा प्रच जे अनिल प्रेमे धन करुणा प्रच हे न प्रभु कोता गेला जया भक्ति चारु स्वामी गुरुदेवा भक्ति चारु स्वामी गुरु देवा जय भक्ति चारु स्वामी गुरुदेवा भक्ति चरु स्वामी गुरु देवा जय वैष्णव तकू वैष्णव तकू जय वैष्णव जय प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा जय प्रभु नीता गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल नीता गौर हरि बोल शिला भक्ति चार स्वामी महाराज की जय शिला प्रभुपाद की जय गौर प्रेम नंदे हरि हरि बोल थैंक यू वेरी मच श्री कृष्ण प्रभु हरि कृष्ण वी अपॉलोजाइज अबाउट दैट टेक्निकल हिच If Ram Govind Maharaj is um, still on the call, Priya Kishori, we can have Ram Govind Maharaj now. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram. Uh, so Hare I Ram. think Maharaj has dropped off for now. Okay. Okay, then we'll go to our last two speakers. His Holiness Chaitanya Vaidya Maharaj and the Giri Raj Swami. Um, is uh, His Holiness Chaitanya Vaidya Maharaj still online? Yes. Oh yes. Well, now we have yeah. Please. So maybe we have maybe we have His Holiness Chaitanya Vaidya Maharaj first. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please go ahead. Oh, Magdan. So we are having His Holiness Chaitanya Vaidya March first. Namaham Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Shamini Ti Namne Namaste Sarasati Deve Gaudavani Pracharani Nirvise Shashunya Vadi Pashtajate Shatarne Pancha Gopatarubhyastra Kripa Sindho Vyevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Nimo Nama Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivinoda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare About one of our other God brothers Shri Ramarsh Swami once said, because he was, this God brother was a wonderful Kirtaniya, is a wonderful Kirtaniya. Ramarsh said, you can't chant like that after only one lifetime. So that was just Kirtan, but Bhakti Charamarsh is of a different caliber. I, I can't even speak of lifetimes because I, what do we know where Bhakti Charamarsh has, has come from? But Srila Prabhupada immediately selected him out. Prabhupada, those with ordinary vision like me might not have seen right away. In fact, Tamal Krishna Marsh, with whom Marsh had such a, Bhakti Charamarsh had such a close relationship, he questioned Prabhupada that isn't he rather new? You're, you're giving him second initiation, you're giving him sannyas. And Prabhupada, I don't remember exactly the quotation, but it was like, you have no idea. 
Prabhupada immediately saw that Krishna had sent him such a, a special person. And Bhakti Charamaraj proved that. I I've recounted elsewhere that when Maharaj first came, not first, but when he came to Vrindavan in Prabhupada's last days, I'd been there for a little bit longer. And Maharaj came in the middle of the night, as I recall. And he offered his obeisances to Prabhupada. And then he was, Prabhupada, of course, was lying prone on his bed. Maharaj began speaking to Prabhupada in such a soothing voice and with such a gentle and gentle mood. Uh, speaking to Prabhupada in Bengali, I couldn't understand, but I could understand the purport. And I, if I remember, he was also like massaging Prabhupada's head or soothing Prabhupada's head. And he, his mood was just so wonderful that I thought that this is what a disciple is like. This is what it means to be a disciple, to have so much love for the spiritual master, to be so gentle and so willing to serve. This is, I thought this is a real disciple. In Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto, when Krishna leaves the planet, Arjun says, Soham Nirpendra Rahita Purushottamena Satya Priyena Surida Hridayena Shunya. But Yudhisthira had been asking different speculative questions about what had happened, why Arjun was so dejected. And Arjun finally came out and said that now I'm bereft of that person, Purushottam, that, that supreme person who's, uh, who's my friend, Sakena, and Priyena, who is so dear, uh, Surida, who is such a, a well-wisher, now, uh, Ridiana Shunya, now my heart is vacant. Now my heart is vacant. But this is how we feel when the spiritual master leaves or when such a dear friend leaves. Pretty in a shunya. Now my heart is vacant. But as the narrative unfolds, the Arjun says, Desha Kalarta Yuktani. O Bashamani Cha, Arantis, Smaratas Chittam, Govinda, Nihitani. Uh, now I'm in, attracted to those instructions that he gave me. And the, because they're uh, they can relieve the burning heart. Uh, 
that can relieve the burning heart. As the narration proceeds, then it's described that by remembering Krishna's instructions, Arjun was whatever unwanted things were in his heart, whatever trash, Bhagavatam says, was in his heart, was driven away, and he was pacified. But Krishna is still with us. By his words of instruction. So the So naturally we'll feel stricken and by the absence of Bhakti Charmash. But as we continue we have to remember his words of instruction, his example, his very clear instructions to his disciples about what they should do. He, he didn't leave ambiguity. Should I stay in his gun? Should I leave here, go someplace else? Should I serve um, in some other way? He was unequivocal. And not only on, on that matter of institutional loyalty, but the whole path of Krishna consciousness from the philosophical outline down to the fine details. Everything was, was there from the finer points of etiquette to the greater points of standing up for what Prabhupada wanted for, as he said, barking. Uh, if, if I'm Prabhupada's dog, and if I see something intruding, I have to, to bark. So we had that, we saw that in, in, in New York City. He was, he played such a heroic role in saving our temple. And in even in the little things, he was so refined. He was so refined. What this is our this is what a Vaishnav is. It's hard to understand to describe what a Vaishnav is. It's like where do you get the words? Where do you how do you convey it to someone? But those who've come in touch with Bhakti Charmaj, they know what a Vaishnav is. So we can just remember him, worship him, and serve his instructions and carry on. That's the, the life of the disciple. In the absence of the spiritual master's physical presence, his instructions are the life and, life and soul of the disciple. That there was some book that was brought to Prabhupada one time, written by one of his god brothers, where the god brother wrote that when my Guru Maharaj left this world, I, left, I lost the light of my life. And then he describes how he did so many other things. And then now finally I'm writing this book. Prabhupada said he should have served Guru Maharaj. Wandering here, wandering there. He should have served Guru Maharaj. So Bhakti Charmaj, very 
excellently served Srila Prabhupada, his Guru Maharaj. And Maharaj's disciples can have that excellent example to follow. Not only his disciples, we all have that excellent example to follow. This is how Vaishnav lives. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Really appreciate those touching words. Thank you very, very much. Hare Krishna. So if Rama Govinda Maharaj is now ready, we can go to Rama Govinda. Namo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale, Imate Bhakti Chayar Swami Tanan. I first met Bhakti Chayar Swami Maharaj in 2007 in Mayapur. Before that, I used to attend Maharaj lecture in Mayapur. And also, in Dorsana, we had a Bangladesh devotee, Satyavan Prabhu. He always used to tell the devotees about Bhakti Chayar Swami Maharaj, the lectures, and used to have so many cassettes of the songs of Bhakti Chayar Swami Maharaj. Used to play in Barsana. When I played for Sanyas, then Devakinandan Prabhu then went for interviews of Sanyas committee. I went, he took me to Bhakti Chaur Samharal quarters in Bayapur. I paid obeisance and told Maharaj, Maharaj, I played for Sanyas, bless me. Then Maharaj, given more than 25 minutes instructions, what does it mean by sannyasa in his own? First, he told me that don't compare the sannyasa in his own uh, with the sannyasa and other what you read in the scriptures. And he given elaborately in how it differs with the scriptural sannyasa. Sanyasa in Islam, it is meant for the preaching, not for sitting alone. That is how Maharaj was so kind the first time I met Maharaj. So kind he was, elaborately, his patience gave me so much uh, teachings to me, instructed me. Never believed, never expected that such a great Maharaj will give, take time to talk to me for such a long time. I was feeling and not I was not feeling comfortable to sit on the sofa with Maharaj. Because normally it's our tendency tradition is that one should not sit at the same level with Maharaj as we should sit on the floor. But then no, no sit here. The Maharaj was always very kind. And when I went to Jain a couple of times. After coming back from then, in Mayapur, when I met Maharaj, I used to meet Maharaj every year, all time in Mayapur. I told that Maharaj, I, I was in Udyan, it's a very nice temple, I liked it. All the devotees I know, they were in Mayapur. When I first went to Mayapur, Ujjain, it looked like that it is the extension of Mayapur, because all the devotees, whom I used to have a good friendship with the devotees, Brahmacharis, and Mayapur, I found them there. My Maharaj was very happy. So please go every year. Give them a service. Maharaj always smiling. I always remember the Maharaj smiling face. He's enthusiastic. Whenever I met Maharaj, when he gives instructions, preach always. 
first instruction also maharaj told me you have to understand the mission of propas mood what mood propas went on preaching even the difficult times also if you all keep in that mood in your mind and did go to the mission of propas everything will go well in this con is not separate from propas it is the body of propas so like that very valuable instructions la propas has the bhagavata samaraj of him to me and eternal adapted to maharaj whenever i used to meet in mayapur he was very kind to me instruction mercy i became more close when maharaj came to borsana temple opening we were very happy to see maharaj there everybody was glad to see maharaj there so departing by so you don't get the association of the lord physical maharaj physically but through the one we can always remember sometimes it is a blessing also just like forgetfulness of our da our previous life is a blessing for us the same way since the lord maharaj departed time we are not there not seen so we can always remember the maharaj smiling face i never saw like the sir maharaj in a serious mood always see whenever mayapur then anywhere i saw always smiling maharaj smiling face we can always remember and understand in how maharaj in all the times dedicated service to the service of propas we can learn from him and we also should try to move in that way but the the disciples it is very difficult to feel it is difficult that they will not get the association anymore but as the copies were always in thought of krishna in separation that made them always to be in krishna and also we can also feel presence of bhagdar swam maharaj in separation that will be real meditation on the guru also i pray maharaj wherever he is there he always is propas yesterday somebody was talking on sent a message on the facebook i wrote that the propas wanted is the the disciple to come back to so that he can send to other planet maybe whatever the task the propas has given to complete now propas want to engage in some other planet to preach same teachings of chaitanya mahaprabhu that the liberated soul they always go on the task allocated by the supreme lord and the propas you will remain always in our memory i pray to the lord sri ta bhakti tar swam maharaj to bless me so that i continue in my service to the lord sri ta propas kala bhakti se tar swam maharaj ki thank you very much maharaj hari krishna really appreciate it so dear, dear devotees we've coming to the conclusion we like to ask his holiness shri giriraj swami maharaj to kindly say a few words and lead in the shingadev prayer at the end and then we'll conclude after that so shri giriraj swami maharaj hari krishna hari krishna well, this has been a very um moving experience uh remembering his holiness bhakti tru swami maharaj in separation now and uh recalling you know his affectionate dealings personally and his um his uh inspired service um i first met him uh in the bathroom the makeshift makeshift bathroom at the mahakumbha mela um 
1977. Um, uh, he was a, a new person to me. So I asked, you know, who he was and uh, what his background was. And um, yeah, I, I won't reiterate what others have said about his service. So Prabhupada recognized him and uh, brought him close, you know, gave him first and second initiation at one time and then six months later, sannyas. I was very touched, I mean, overall, by His Holiness Jai Dwight Swami's talk, but in particular, his account of how uh, Bhakti True Swami entered Srila Prabhupada's room when Srila Prabhupada was very ill at the end in Vrindavan and spoke in a very loving and soothing way to him in Bengali. Um, that really touched me because, I mean, that was just so beautiful. In Ananda Kumar Prabhu's nice talk, he, he listed a succession of qualities. And at the end, uh, he concluded with the phrase, uh, the heart of a Vaishnav. And I wrote something <laughs> about Maharaj called the heart of a Vaishnav. And hearing that, I felt sort of encouraged uh, to, to read that little reflection. One of Sri Pad Bhakti Chiru Swami Maharaj's most prominent qualities was his deep love for Srila Prabhupada. Very soon after Maharaj met Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada included him in his personal staff and made him his secretary for Bengali and Hindi correspondence. Soon thereafter, Srila Prabhupada gave him first and second initiation and then sannyas. And Maharaj personally served Srila Prabhupada throughout Prabhupada's last days. His Holiness Bhakti True Swami was also devoted to ISKCON. He always considered ISKCON to be a unique creation of Srila Prabhupada and always wanted to serve ISKCON, both the devotees in ISKCON and ISKCON as an entity, a manifestation of Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, he, he really did consider ISKCON to be an entity, to be served and uh, he always encouraged devotees to be you know, loyal to ISKCON and uh, attached to ISKCON. Yeah. He was really in the mood of service to the devotees, especially the devotees of ISKCON and to ISKCON itself. Maharaj was a very pure-hearted, loving person. His love for Srila Prabhupada was seen in his love for the devotees and for people in general, whom he wanted to bring to Srila Prabhupada, and in how he encouraged devotees to increase their engagement, take on more responsibility, and become more loving, humble servants. The more responsibility one accepts, Maharaj once explained, to a devotee in Mauritius. The bigger servant of the devotees one becomes. And yeah, that was so much Maharaj's mood to be the servant, servant of the servant of the servant. So yeah, the more responsibility one accepts, Maharaj once explained to a devotee in Mauritius, the bigger servant of the devotees one becomes. This reminded me of something Srila Prabhupada once said. A disciple came into Prabhupada's room in Mayapur one day and began to complain about the management. Srila Prabhupada said, if you think you can do better, why don't you? 
somehow the disciple came out and announced that Srila Prabhupada had made him the temple commander. And he began to boss around the other devotees. Some devotees complained to Srila Prabhupada that the devotee had said that Prabhupada had made him the temple commander and that now he was barking orders at everyone. So Srila Prabhupada called for the devotee and instructed him, first you become the servant of everyone, then you become the temple commander. And so Srila Prabhupada expressed uh, the same idea as Bhakti Chiru Swami, that a bigger position means becoming a bigger servant. And if we listen carefully to all of Maharaja's instructions, we can understand how closely he followed the disciplic succession. Some of his statements were very close to Srila Prabhupada's words, and some took the basic principles that Srila Prabhupada gave and sweetened them with personal realization. Another of the many fine qualities exemplified by His Holiness Bhakti Chiru Swami Maharaj was his offenselessness. He was very careful not to commit any offense against any devotee or any living entity. And if he felt he had committed an offense, he would immediately try to mitigate the effects by approaching the person of apologizing and asking forgiveness. Somehow or other, he tried to rectify the offense. From our point of view, we wouldn't think he had committed an offense, but within his pure heart, he may have felt that he had, and immediately he would try to approach and please the person he feared he had offended to remove the effects of the offense. Maharaja's heart was pure and very sensitive, full of compassion for other devotees and sensitive to his own faults, which again, from our point of view, wouldn't even have been considered false. That is really the heart of a Vaishnava, full of love and appreciation for others, but sensitive to one's own deficiencies or mistakes. As stated by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita 12, 13, and 14. This is, I, I just feel this describes Maharaj. One who is not envious, but is a kind friend to all living entities, who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled, and engaged in devotional service with determination. His mind and intelligence fixed on me. Such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. Um, one other I mean, many devotees have commented on what a gentleman Maharaj was. And, and yeah, he was a gentleman. He, 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 he followed Vaishnava etiquette perfectly. And he helped the movement. I mean, he helped the movement immeasurably in so many ways. Uh, but one of the ways in which he helped was to teach devotees Vaishnava etiquette. Um, and But the idea of him being a perfect gentleman reminded me of an exchange that took place with Srila Prabhupada, in which an interviewer asked Prabhupada, how would I recognize a true follower of the Krishna consciousness movement by his behavior? What would his traits be? What would his outward expressions be? And Prabhupada replied, yes, his behavior, he's a perfect gentleman, that's all. You cannot find any fault in him. 
that is perfect Krishna consciousness. So His Holiness Bhakti Chiru Swami was certainly a perfect gentleman and uh, con uh, the, the conclusion would, would be based on Sri Prabhupada's statement that he was perfect in Krishna consciousness. Uh, one small thing uh, that one of his disciples wrote me <coughs> yesterday, you know, in the aftermath of Maharaj's departure, he was lamenting that he wouldn't be able to hear Maharaj call his name. And I could relate to that because, I mean, in general, <laughs> when he uttered my name, I'm sure it's true of all of the other devotees' names, but in my case, I remember, I remember when he uttered my name, it would, it would be just so full of love and mercy. Uh, there is one incident. The incident's not important, but it's just to give a context to his statement. But Maharaj initiated uh, a very nice disciple in Santa Barbara and, and gave him the name Giridhari Priya. And, uh, and Maharaj had another disciple in the, in the Santa Barbara area named Kandarpa Manjuri. And she said to Maharaj, this was in San Diego, the initiation took place. Uh, he said to Maharaj, now, you know, now you have a disciple in Santa Barbara, so, um, you know, you'll, you'll have reason uh, to, to come to Santa Barbara now. And he looked at me <laughs> and with so much uh, love and affection, he said, uh, I will come to Santa Barbara not to be with my disciple. I will come to Santa Barbara to be with Giriraj Maharaj. And the way he said Giriraj Maharaj was really just uh, full of love and mercy. So, yeah, we miss him. Uh, but as we know from Shastra and we know from experience, uh, as Srila Prabhupada wrote in his dedication to his Srimad Bhagavatam, dedicated to his spiritual master, he lives forever by his divine instructions and the follower lives with him. So uh, in that way, we associate with Srila Prabhupada in his absence. And when we associate with Srila Prabhupada, we associate with his dear associates. Uh, as Srila Prabhupada explained in his purport to the prayer of Vandeham, but that's, that would be a bit of a digression. But yeah, the spiritual master is not alone, he's with his associates. And so, um, yeah, for now, as long as possible, I guess you could say I will associate, continue to associate with Srila Prabhupada and now with His Holiness Bhakti Chur Swami Maharaj by, by Vani, uh, by following their instructions and uh, an example, you know, uh, yeah, Maharaj is like such an inspiration to so many devotees and to me as well. And I really pray to him and to all of you that I will be able to uh, live up at least to some uh, little degree to his 
his expectations, his wishes uh, as a servant of, of Srila Prabhupada, of him, of his disciples, of, of everyone in his khan and, <laughs> and, and, and everyone in the world. Uh, one of the qualities mentioned in the nectar of devotion uh, is to not give pain to any living entity. And um, <clears throat> uh, the nectar of devotion has a quotation in, in support of that principle uh, that, uh, you know, that the devotee acts towards everyone something like as a, as a, as a, as, a, as an affectionate mother acts to towards her child and you know does not call, cause any painful action in the mind of any living entity and i think uh Srila Bhakti Swami Maharaj really had that quality and exemplified that quality and that's <laughs> one of the many qualities of his that I will try to um, imbibe, try to emulate him and his uh, wonderful qualities and service. And um, yeah, thank you all for uh, coming together for this wonderful opportunity to, um, to appreciate and glorify and serve uh, His Holiness Bhakti Truth Swami Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for those very profound and comforting words. Really, really appreciate it. It definitely cools the heart that's burning. Thank you so much. So, Maharaj, would you now uh, lead the Shigadev prayer and then we'll conclude after that? Sure. the others are muted. There's some delay between um, responding. Please forgive me if I committed any <laughs>
Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much. So we'd like to thank all the senior Vaishnavas for their kind words and their loving appreciation. We had over 450 or maybe 500 at some times locations connected to this call. 
So the technical difficulties, we can well, you know, it's kind of expected with such complexity in the communication. Srila Prabhupada said that the relationship with the spiritual master is an eternal one. The guru is the master because he is the servant of the servant of the supreme master, Lord Sri Krishna. Therefore, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in his guru astikam prayer, in the eighth verse, Yasya Prashado, Bhagavad Prashado, Yasya Prashado, Nagati Gutopi. That verse, by the mercy of the spiritual master, one receives the benediction of Krishna without the grace of the spiritual master. Without the grace of the spiritual master, one cannot make any advancement. Therefore, I should always remember and praise the spiritual master at least three times a day. I should offer my respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of such a spiritual master. So we have memories and we have the instructions from such a personality, such a spiritual master. And we, all the words we heard to get today together with the instructions of his holiness, Bhakti Charamaj, we keep it deep in our hearts and we live and follow the example of surrender and sacrifice that he demonstrated. Tomorrow is the third day ceremony um, the details will follow. Pushpanjali uh, in the morning and in the evening there will be tributes by disciples. We will be using the same Zoom address. Prabhupada Prabhu will share that. So with this, we are pretty much a full hour, I think, outside of time. But it was a very, uh, very comforting uh, online appreciation, and we really thank all the devotees who have participated and all our senior Vaishnavas has given us such wonderful words of encouragement and wisdom. So that we would like to end the program today. His Holiness Srila Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. 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 Ki Jai. 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 Jai.